The tramming blocks that came with this Vivo dividing head and tail stock are 16 millimeters wide and they won't fit in the T-slots on my Harrison Mill or my Elliott Shaper. So rather than modify these, I'm actually going to make some new ones. Now it's interesting, these blocks fit quite nicely into this, but I can't get them to fit into this. These slots are just a little bit too narrow, never mind. As we all know, these tools are good value, but they often need a bit of um, tweaking, don't they? Anyway, I've got some 16 millimeter square bright bar, which will just nicely drop into those slots there. Uh, it's a little bit loose in the slots in this one. I won't turn it over because it will just make a big noise, but I don't think it matters. Um, it'll be fine. So that's the project to cut some tramming blocks to fit in here and in here. And we'll do it mainly on the Harrison Mill in horizontal mode. Fortunately, I was given two matching brand new side and face cutters, five inch by half inch for a one inch arbor and a quarter key. So I'm going to cut the tramming blocks into a T shape using these, but spaced. So I've got a slightly under half inch spacer. It's slightly loose in there. So somebody's taken a half inch spacer and ground it a bit. But if I use a half inch spacer dead on, it's obvious that the blocks are not going to fit, assuming that that face there is in line with that cutting edge there. So I have some shims. This is all stuff that Jason gave me. This is stuff that Tony gave me. You know who you are. Thank you very much. And if I measure, it's 0.496 inches. It's just very slightly loose on this main uh, T slot way. It's just slightly tight on that one and it's only to do with where, how much they get used. Well, I suppose we should expect it. The quarter key, which I bought new, and it is a quarter by the way, won't fit in this <laughs> quarter slot. So job for the surface grinder to take a fraction off this, just to make it a sliding fit in here. First job for the Herbert Junior Surface Grinder, Mark II. Half a thou. Too much. That's it. Perfect. I'll have to check that spacing. I ought to make a proper spanner for this rather than using an adjustable. Sorting out the tramming keys for this vise will be the next job probably. It's taken me ages to get this right. So this is three millimeters deep, this channel. So when I've finished, the wide part of my T on these keys will need to be no more than three millimeters tall, but I need enough to hold onto in this vise. Yeah, so you can see this piece I'm clamping on here. Now these original keys are about the same height off the face of this uh, vise jaw here but that includes the three millimeters that went into here. 
or would have done if this was wide enough, that is. So I'll cut down to nearly to these jaws, just above the jaws, and then I'll flip this over the other way, drop it in, and then I'll machine the surface, which will then, this underside will become the top surface, and then machine it down to three millimeters tall off the jaw, um, and then we'll be about right for size. Next I need to set up the traverse speed. Now I can't actually read how many teeth are on these gears, I'm not sure why, they're on the right way. I'll have a look as I take them off. But the gears that I want are actually these two up here. So a 22 and a 59 which is on this table, which you might just see on shot, I hope you will. And that will give me 31 millimetres per minute of feed, which is about an inch and a quarter per minute which I'm hoping is about right for horizontal milling. I've got five inch cutters in, so they're quite big. Well, sure enough, these two gears that came out don't have numbers on, but by deduction, I know that's a 43 and that is a 38. All the others have numbers, apart from that one, which is too small, which is a 17. So why didn't they put numbers on these two? Were they just short on numbers that day? It's just crazy, isn't it? British quality, that's what it is, you know. You know, whilst we're on this topic of things not being right, I've recently decided that I'm not going to get upset when things don't work like IT things, because so much doesn't work these days. So I'm going to work on the principle that nothing works, and if something works, that's a bonus. And speaking of failure, I've got the gears the wrong way around, that one needs to go at the top. That's more like it. So I'll just do a test cut now, we'll skim the top of this block and make sure we're in alignment. So it should just give me two bright lines, that's all. There we are, just two bright lines to measure and check. Well, here goes with a one millimeter cut. Or it would be. That's it. Hmm, sounds fairly comfortable, doesn't it? Try and get a bit more coolant on it. That's it. Ah, no problem to it. About 70 RPM, an inch and a quarter per minute feed, so about 32 millimetres per minute feed, 1.2 millimetre depth of cut, and it seems quite happy at that. There's not too much table vibration, so I'm just going to work my way down now to just above the level of the jaws. Coming off my last cut now. Whoa, look how close I got it to that vice jaw. Well, at least it proves the vice is square. Hmm. I spent a lot of time trying to decide how close fitting to make this in these T-slots. There's a little bit there. A fraction. It's perhaps better to have a little bit of movement. You know, there's nothing worse than getting it too tight and having to hammer, th hammer the thing in. That'll be okay. So the next thing is to drop that back into there, the other way up, and then machine this top down so that that step 
from that edge to the top is only three millimeters. Well, when I measure it, the T on this is 11th out under half inch, which makes it a little bit more sloppy than I wanted. So when I come to cut the keys for this vise, I'll use one of these shims here and just give myself maybe another six thou, something like that. So, flipped it over, dropped it in with the T part down. I need to machine this surface so that that step there is about three millimeters. And I've put on a half millimeter cut, which seems to be about best for the amount that I'm taking off, you know, across this surface here. You know, this is just so satisfying. Give me horizontal milling any day over vertical milling because I've got time. If I didn't have time, I'd have to use vertical, wouldn't I? In fact, I could do this quicker on the shaper than this. But you want to see the finish. It's a terrific, like a mirror finish almost on this. Add this to the vice review. Look, there's a hole there. What it is, it's breakthrough from the screw underneath that locates the front tramming key, if you've got the key in. And uh, because there's no channel here, so the fluid's dribbling over this and then running down and going all over my knee. So that needs capping off somehow. That'll be another little upgrade for this vice when I get to it. I find these depth micrometers quite hard to use, sensing exactly when that probe is touching the work, no more or no less. And then reading them, because you have to read them kind of in reverse, I find quite difficult to do. I think that's it. There is a clicky on the end here, but it still can push this anvil away. Anyway, that's reading. 3.07 millimeters, 3.07. Although I'm not using the clicker, I can sense it. I can feel when it's just touching. And that's reading slightly under three, 2.95 millimeters. So I'll give it a bit of thought because that's still a fairly fine clearance and it's not necessary to be that fine and if there's a bit of dirt under this or something I could regret it. I will probably take another 0.2 of a millimetre off that. Well for sure I could have done that quicker on the shaper but I wouldn't have got a finish like that and it just proves you've got to do to know. You can't get any of this from a book. The keying blocks will be secured with five millimeter cap head screws. Now I don't have a counter bore that size. I need to get myself a set, but anyway, that's another story. So I'll have to do it in steps. So just checking that it does fit, which it does. It's just right, actually. I'll mark it, I'll mark it out and then drill it and counter bore it using an end mill. Well, using the micrometer, I know that the height of this is 15.9, so I'm going to set this gauge to 7.95. Obviously this isn't a surface table, but it's good enough for this. I do have a surface table, but I can't be bothered to clear all the junk off it. So I made this actually, you probably realise. Um, just normal calipers, made a block, fastened it on, 7.94, but it's close enough. So I'll just score it across the blue and then I will check it. Well, I can see straight away that that's in the middle. I don't have to measure it. So I'll center punch it in four places because I'm making four indexing keys. Then I'll drill it five millimeter clearance. Then I'll drill it for the cap head clearance. And then I'll use an end mill to bottom out the cap head clearance drill.
Right, now for the counterbar part, and I've got an 11.7, I should say, 11.32, uh, end mill here, slot drill actually. Thank you, Greg, my little mule, who sent me quite a lot of these. So we're going to drill into this, 6 mil, all four, and then I'll move this to another smaller drilling machine I've got, which is a bit more precise. The reason I'm using this model maker's precision drill is the chuck runs off on the big drill, which is fine when you're just using twist drills because it just flexes a little bit. But when you're using something rigid here, like an end mill or a slot drill, this chuck runs true, so it's much better. To divide this into four, I'm going to use a slitting saw. But I've never used one before, so I'm going to do some tests first because I don't know what speed or feed I'm going to need. And the other thing is, of course, this vise clamps this way, but to be slitting, I need to be holding my work that way. Now, this vise doesn't seem to have anywhere to clamp at the ends, although it does have slots for tramming keys in both directions. Nevertheless, whatever, I'm going to have to set up a vise arrangement to hold it this way so I can cut like that. Well this will be my slitting saw test just to cut a bit off the end of this 16 by 16 square. You can see how thin this is. Never used one before, no idea how this is going to go. Well, it's the next morning and I've been watching some YouTube videos on slitting saws. Um, 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 I think I've got it set up about right. I've set the table on the lowest, slowest possible traverse, 22 millimeters per minute. So that's, you know, about three quarters of an inch, slightly over per minute. I'm only going to try a one millimeter cut. From what I've seen, I should be able to go all the way through this, but I just want to take it one step at a time. We're still on about 63 RPM. And we'll give it a go. I'll just start it by hand. Sounds all right, doesn't it? Let's try the traverse then. I will give that a push. Here we go. Uh, why has that stopped making that noise? What's happened? Let me check it. Well, that just seems to be running quiet. It is cutting, I think. Yes, it is. I can see it is. Well, that's going easier than I expected. That's just to give you an idea of the traverse speed. Well, that looks perfect to me. It makes a lot of noise when the saw is coming on and coming off, but it, when it's running in the main part of the cut, there's almost no noise at all. So I'm going to go all the way and cut it that full depth of 16 millimeters. Wish me luck. Well, you missed the interesting bit. Ooh, there was a big crash and shatter and bits flew everywhere. So yeah, well, we got the answer to that then. I've got a few of those. A pity I didn't get that on video. Never mind. Hang on. It's nothing to do with this. Look. <laughs> so what's happened is this has come to here, twisted the vise, then it snapped the blade. Oh, my goodness. What a complete idiot. What's the learning point on this then? Clears it on the full depth of cut. Gloves gone. Thank goodness that vice didn't have tramming keys because I don't know what would have happened. I would have smashed the table drive or something. In fact I could still have done. 
although it didn't seem like it to be honest now I'm going to start a fresh cut I chickened out I'm trying one millimeter again to begin with sounds all right doesn't it well here goes nothing stand well back Why is that so quiet? Is it working? Oh. And now this time you got it on camera. Right, I don't think we'll be doing that again. Well, there was quite a lot of learning in that, wasn't there? You know, next time I go to the auto jumble, I might get some slitting saws. They could be useful, couldn't they? I do have some wider ones, but I just wanted to see yeah <laughs> my waste bucket here is like a slitting saw graveyard the reason i was trying to use the slitting saws to cut these off is because i'm just hopeless at hacksawing straight and on my rapido machine hacksaw you can't get any cutting edge closer than about uh, three inches, four inches from the vise. Now I'm just taking off this black effect, whatever that's called, because that's stopping this sitting uh, neatly down on the surface. And also the reason that the keys wouldn't fit in was because of this black finish on these edges. But when you take that off, it does. I made a center pop on the side of every one of these keys, all four just in case I was not on the centre line and then they should all then sit the same way with the same offset if, if there is an offset of course in fact this black finish had gummed up these threads as well so I had to clean those out I finished it off with a file on the hacksawed end and put some chamfers on A little bit can you hear it well you know as I said I would have made those keys a little bit wider I was more concerned about making them too tight and then them jamming I've done that so many times I'll just need to make sure I just push it over a bit before I clamp it if I'm even that concerned about the tram it'll still save me a lot of time when I cut the keys for the vise I'll just make them that little bit wider and that might be a video coming soon, but I can't promise you the exploding slitting saw experience. Right, we'll get all the pips the same way. There, there, there and there. To make sure the offset's right. It's quite windy out there today, a bit of a storm coming. You know, thinking about it, where the work struck this horizontal beam support bracket, I think what would have happened, the X-Feed table motor would have stalled and that would have been protected by the inverter. But it was still pretty scary and a silly mistake to make. Well, that's it for this one. Now tell me honestly, were you cringing when I was using that slitting saw? Were you going, oh, this is never gonna work, I can't watch. Sometimes you have to do it to know it. Thanks for watching.